What's up, nerds? So, Acheron is the greatest DPS character ever released in Honkai Star Rail. But she's a little bit finicky. She makes Nihility do stuff that, like, Nihility's, like, never really done before. And she's, yeah, the best character in the game. So let's go over what her best character synergy and team setups are because she's worth the investment. Okay, so let's go over the sustainability slot first because I think the sustainability slot is a good place to start. There's actually a lot more going on here than a lot of people seem to realize for Acheron teams specifically. So I'm going to go over Gallagher first because he is newer. So... He has an ultimate that inflicts Basadid on all enemies. This is an AOE debuff, and it is associated with his ultimate, so it is a little bit slower, but it is a debuff that will trigger Acheron's talent. He also gets an enhanced basic attack. After he uses his ultimate, this enhanced basic attack reduces a target's defense, or sorry, it reduces their attack. This is also considered to be a debuff, so he actually has two debuffs within his kit making him a very solid choice for Acheron teams specifically. Now, I understand that Gallagher, unfortunately, doesn't seem to be doing too well outside of Acheron teams. This is Prywin's tier list that just updated, and they placed Gallagher in B tier. But that's his average spread overall across all teams, right? If he's on an Acheron team, he doesn't actually need to be that good of a healer. Most of the heavy lifting is going to be done by sweet little Acheron over here, right? So he doesn't need to necessarily do anything other than apply his debuffs, trigger Acheron's talent, and you're pretty much good to go. He's going to be good enough as a healer on an Acheron team. Outside of an Acheron team, maybe not so much, so just something to think about. He is the free-to-play option for Acheron teams or free-to-play players if you have no other options available. Another reason why I went over him first. Gallagher is also on the same banner as Acheron, so you're likely going to end up pulling a Gallagher along the way. You could also just choose him as your four-star choice using the four-star selector from patch 2.1 rewards. However, I would refrain from doing this unless you have to. I would not choose Gallagher as my number one choice or my second or even third choice for an Acheron team. He's basically the baseline, the starting point. If you have no other options, Gallagher does work and he can work because of how strong Acheron is, despite him not being the best healer. Now let's talk about Aventurine, because this dude is an absolute unit, okay? This is gonna be a very powerful preservation shield-based character coming to us in part two of patch 2.1. So you can't build him quite yet, but he's definitely worth the pull, not just for an Acheron team, for literally any team that is based around like crit damage, pretty much any team can benefit from him. But what makes him good for an Acheron team? Well, it's the debuff that is associated with his ultimate. It gives him random blind bet charges, but that's not really the important part. It also deals damage to a single target enemy and can also apply a debuff to that enemy. And whenever an ally launches an attack at the debuffed enemy, they will be rewarded by dealing a noteworthy amount of extra crit damage. So yes, any team can use him, but any team that's based around crit damage is going to benefit from him even more, aka an Acheron team. If you want to know more about Aventurine, I did do an overview of his kit. I'll put the link to it in the pinned comment and description below. But now let's move on to some other characters. Miss Lady Fushuan, who just so happens to have a very, very powerful skill, which just so happens to give a noteworthy amount of crit rate. The one stat that Acheron sucks at having is crit rate. She needs to build very heavily into crit rate in order for her to work properly. And this 12% crit rate that comes off of Fu Xuan is really, really valuable. She's also a preservation unit, which means that she's able to benefit from this light cone trend of universal market. And this light cone is the talk of the town. This light cone is what makes literally any preservation unit good for an Acheron team. Let's read it here. It increases the wearer's defense by 16%. That's not the important part. When the wearer is attacked, there is a 100% base chance to burn the enemy. For each turn, the wearer deals DOT that is equal to 40% of the wearer's defense for two turns. This DOT is considered to be a debuff. So any time an enemy hits your preservation unit, which has a high taunt value, by the way, they're going to deal a DOT, which is essentially a debuff, to the enemy. So this will trigger Acheron's talent. This is incredibly strong. 
And when you consider the fact that Fu Xuan has that 12% crit rate, she's the most reliable preservation unit in the game so far, and you can uh, put this light cone on her, it makes her just kind of like the most broken unit we have in the game right now for an Acheron team, in my opinion. That 12% crit rate is busted, and the fact that you can put this light cone on her makes her, in my opinion, the best Acheron sustain you can possibly use currently. We'll have to see how good adventuring is, but I personally think that Ushuan's the best, at least right now. So as you might be able to tell, Gepard and March 7th both work for Acheron teams because they can both use that preservation light cone. They're just not as good as Fu Xuan because they don't provide extra utility beyond just being a, a tank, I guess you could say. So yeah, Gepper does work. March 7th does work. Use them if you got them. If you have Trend of the Universal Market, if you don't have Trend of the Universal Market, you don't want to use either one of those two, just so that you guys are aware. All right, let's talk about some support characters. Obviously, we're going to be spending a lot of time here in the Nihility section because Acheron has a trace here that if you have one or two Nihility characters other than Acheron on the same team, the damage dealt by Acheron's basic attack, skill, and ultimate increased by 115% for one Nihility character and 160% for two Nihility characters. This is based off of the original damage, respectively. You might notice here that 115% is a big bonus for having just one Nihility character on the team, but having that second Nihility character only gives you a 45% buff beyond that 115. So the first buff is the really important one. The second one is obviously very, very good, but it's not as good as the first. The reason why I'm mentioning all this and waffling about here is because it's actually been tested and proven that instead of run a second Nihility character, you can actually run Sparkle. What's ha what happens here is Sparkle uses her skill, then she lets Acheron act afterwards. So rather than get the trigger for Acheron's talent from a Nihility character, you just let Sparkle give that advance forward to Acheron, and then Acheron triggers her own talent herself. So that's what you're going to want to do with the Sparkle team setup. And because Sparkle's buffs last such a long time, you're able to trigger uh, using Acheron's ultimate and Acheron's skill at the same time having that that buff from sparkle at the same time so definitely something to try out i've tested this out myself this works really well i've had other people in my discord test this out as well at e0 and at e2 and sparkle literally helps them clear faster than if they had two nihility characters on the same team so sparkle is so good that she actually outperforms the intended synergy for acheron teams so consider that if you have that available to you. I know that's not necessarily relatable. Not everybody has every five star in the game. So let's talk about Pela, right? Because although I do think that Sparkle's my favorite support slot choice for an Acheron team, because you can essentially put any other Nihility character with her and it's going to be fine, right? It's already been proven. It's already been tested a whole lot. But Pela is my second favorite choice. And as far as the Nihility characters go, she's my first favorite choice. Because Hela is incredibly energy efficient, she's incredibly skill point efficient, and she has an ultimate that debuffs all enemies at once, and that's truly what makes her so, so good. We'll talk about the Light Cone for her in just a second, because unfortunately for her, she doesn't get the guaranteed debuff unless you are using her Light Cone and you have high enough effect hit rate. We'll talk about that in just a second. But Silver Wolf has to be built in a similar way. Built for super high effect hit rate so that you can land all of her debuffs. And so if you're doing that already with your Silver Wolf, you don't need any other extra light cones for your Silver Wolf to get the job done. The problem with Silver Wolf is that Silver Wolf is single target. She single target uh, acts whenever she attacks enemies and debuffs enemies. It's single target every time. The reason why... Pela is so much better in this scenario than Silverwolf is because Pela debuffs all enemies. And Acheron has an AoE ultimate and a blast damage skill. She wants all of the enemies debuffed, so that's why Pela is the better choice out of those two. But Silverwolf, Pela, 
Those are the two best choices out of the Nihility slot. You could also choose Welt. Welt is, to this day, still a very, very solid unit. Um, a, somewhat underappreciated, definitely not overhyped, but he's somewhat underappreciated in my personal opinion. He has several different debuffs that he could be applying at any given point in time. He is a little bit more skill point hungry, though, than the other units you could be using. That's why I name him or, you know, label him after Pela or Silverwolf for an Acheron team. And then after that, the obvious choice should be Black Swan, because Black Swan does have reliable debuffs, and she has Defense Shred. That's really darn good, especially if you have her signature Light Cone. She's going to be an absolute monster, and she can trigger uh, she can trigger debuffs very consistently. She was better in the beta, but she, but she's still really, really good outside of the beta. And then after Black Swan, pretty much any other Nihility-based unit can work well. I think Gwenaifen has a solid debuff that works really well for Acheron. Um, and, and, and then maybe any of the other units. You know what I mean? Like Luka. Luka does have a debuff too. Sampo does have a deep. Or no, he doesn't. He technically debuffs off of DOTs. But Luka has a traditional debuff. Gwenaifen has a traditional debuff. Um, they just might not have the same damage output outside of a DOT team. That's why Black Swan works so well, you know, and, you know, maybe Gwenaifen's not so bad. Uh, Kafka can work, but it's just not, it's not as ideal as using some of the under nihility based units that you could be using. So, Ayla, Silverwolf, Welt, uh, Black Swan, Gwenaifen, Luka, Kafka, Sampo, somewhat in that order for the support slots. Don't forget about our girl, Sparkle. So my current favorite Akron team to use right now before Aventurine's release, meaning it could change, is Akron, of course, then Pela and Sparkle and Fushuan using the trend of the Universal Market Light Cone. Sparkle outperforms the buff that you would be getting by using another Nihility character. However, Silverwolf instead of Sparkle does work pretty darn well. It's just not quite as good as Sparkle in my personal experience. So this is the Light Cone that you need to be using if you are using Pela on an Acheron team. I do not want to hear any copium about anything else. This is the Light Cone to use if you are using Pela with an Acheron team. If you don't have this Light Cone, you might not actually want to consider Pela for the job. So let's go ahead and read it. When the wearer hits an enemy, and if the hit enemy is not already ensnared, then there is a 70% base chance to ensnare the hit enemy. Ensnared enemy's defense decreases by 13% for one turn. This is at superimposition two. If you have only S1, it's a little lower. If you have S5, it's significantly higher than that. This is resolution shines as pearls of sweat. And 70% base chance is not enough. 100% base chance is also not enough because characters, enemies, specifically have uh resistances right so you can see that i have built effect hit rate up to almost 60 on the character this means that my light cone will have a like roughly 100 and 130 percent base chance in order to apply the debuff i'm getting the debuff because you need like a roughly around 120 or so to get that guarantee and so I have plenty in order to get the debuff with Pela. You need to be doing this with your Pela if you're pairing her with Acheron. You also want some high energy regeneration rates so that you can keep using her ult. Contin She's just a skill point engine and a debuff engine. That's all she needs to do on an Acheron team. Pela's damage does not matter. Don't worry about that build. Effect hit rate and energy and regeneration on her and also use her light cone for the job so you guys let me know who you've been using with Akron, what team synergies you have found that you enjoy with Akron. let me know if your dad left your mom because Akron is so hot let me know if you think Akron's too good for this game because she's just too broken right now and it was too early and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out